Immune response to bacteria. Bacteria are prokaryotic microorganisms. Some of them are pathogenic and can cause number of diseases. Some of the disease caused by bacteria are tuberculosis, meningitis, cholera, typhoid fever, etc. Most of the bacterial diseases are treated with antibiotics. However, the immune system has various mechanisms to counter bacterial infections. Both the inert and the adaptive immunity works to eliminate bacterial infections. The inert immunity has physical barriers of epithelial cells and mucosal lining which does not allow easy entry of the bacteria. However, bacteria enters the body through a number of natural routes like respiratory tracts, gastrointestinal tracts, urinogenital tracts, etc. by overcoming the physical barriers. Bacteria can also enter the body when there are some cuts or breaks in the mucous membrane or skin. The type of immune response depends on the number and the virulence of the infecting microorganisms. If the number of invading bacteria is small and the virulence is weak, then the non-specific inert response with phagocytic cells may be able to eliminate the bacteria. Whereas, if the number of invading bacteria is large with greater virulence, then the specific adaptive immune responses are required to eliminate the bacteria. Immune response to extracellular bacteria. Extracellular bacteria are those which have not entered the host cells. Such bacterial infections are mainly counteracted by the antibodies. These antibodies are secreted by plasma cells present in the limb nodes and other secondary lymphoid organs present in the submucosa of the respiratory and the gastrointestinal tracts. The antibodies secreted by these plasma cells are the main components of the humoral immune response against extracellular bacteria. Antibodies use different mechanisms to eliminate the bacteria. Antibodies can neutralize the bacteria and thus preventing attachment of bacteria to host cells for infections. Extracellular bacteria can be pathogenic because they induce a localized inflammatory response or because they produce toxins. These toxins, both endotoxin and exotoxin secreted by the bacteria are cytotoxic. These toxins can be neutralized by antibodies or complement proteins and render them inactive. Extracellular bacteria can also activate the complement system which causes complement mediated lysis of the bacteria through the formation of membrane attack complex or MEX by the activated complement proteins. Antibody mediated complement activation can produce many immune effector molecules that can amplify and develop a more effective immune response. For example, complement split products like C3A and C4A can act as an anaphylotoxin causing mast cell degranulation and leading to vasodilation and extravasation of neutrophils and lymphocytes in the tissue from the blood. Antibody production and complement activation can also facilitate receptor-mediated opsonization and phagocytosis of the extracellular bacteria by macrophages and neutrophils in the localized inflammatory response. Immune response to intracellular bacteria. When a bacterium infects a host cell, it establishes itself within the host cell. Such intracellular bacteria cannot be easily eliminated. The role of the inert immunity in clearing such intracellular bacteria is not very significant. However, intracellular bacteria activate natural killer cells 
which in turn provides an early defense against intracellular bacterial infections. In the adaptive immunity, intracellular bacteria activates the cell-mediated immune response, particularly the delayed type hypersensitivity response mediated by T helper 1 cells. Activated CD4 positive T helper 1 cells produces cytokines like interferon gamma, which is an activator of macrophages. Such activated macrophages can effectively kill the intracellular bacteria. The immune mechanism and the ways bacteria evade the immune response. There are four major steps in bacterial infection. Attachment to host cells, proliferation, invasion of host tissue, and toxin-induced damage to host cells. The host immune system acts at each of these steps and many bacteria develop ways to evade the host defense mechanisms. Attachment to host cells Many bacteria have surface structures or molecules that help them to attach to the host cells. For example, a number of gram-negative bacteria have pili, long hair-like projections which enable them to attach to the membrane of the intestinal or genitourinary tract. Other bacteria like Bordetella pertussis secretes adhesion molecules that facilitates attachment to host cells. The humoral immune response secretes IgA specific for such bacterial structures which when attached to the molecule prevent attachment of bacteria to host mucosal epithelial cells. This is the main host defense against bacterial attachment. However, some bacteria like Haemophilus influenza and Neisseria gonorrhea, etc. secretes proteases that cleave secretory IgA at the hinge region, rendering them unable to agglutinate and can thus evade the host defense. Bacteria like Neisseria gonorrhea have highly variable structures of their pili and can thus evade the host defense by changing their surface antigens. Proliferation The host defense mechanism against bacterial proliferation are by phagocytosis, both through antibody and C3A mediated opsonization and complement mediated lysis and localized inflammatory response. Some bacteria possess surface structures that serve to inhibit phagocytosis. For example, Streptococcus pneumoniae possesses a polysaccharide capsule which effectively prevents phagocytosis. There are 84 stereotypes of S. pneumoniae that differs from one another by distinct capsular polysaccharides. Another example is Streptococcus pyrozines, possesses a surface protein projection called the M protein, inhibits phagocytosis. Some pathogenic streptococci secretes a coagulase enzyme that precipitates a fibrin coat around them, derived from the host and forms a seal against phagocytic cells. Some bacteria have developed mechanisms that interfere with the complement system to survive. For example, some gram-negative bacteria possesses long side chain on the lipid A moiety on the cell wall core polysaccharide that help them to resist complement-mediated lysis. A number of bacteria escape host defense mechanism by their ability to survive within the phagocytic cells. For example, Listeria monocytosines escape to the cytoplasm from the phagolysosomes to survive. Other bacteria like Mycobacterium abium block lysosomal fusion with the phagolysosomes and prevent themselves from oxidative attacks. Some bacteria like Pseudomonas secretes an enzyme elastase that inactivates both the C3A and C5A anaphylotoxin 
and thus reduces the localized inflammatory reaction. Invasion of host tissue. The major host defense against invasion of host tissue by bacteria is by antibody-mediated agglutination. However, some bacteria secretes hyaluronidase which digests the hyaluronic acid present as a main component of the extracellular matrix in the tissues and thus enhances bacterial invasiveness. Toxin induced damage to host cells. Bacteria secrete many toxins that damage host cells. Host immune system secretes antibodies that can neutralize these toxins and render them inactive. Sometimes, disease is caused not by the bacterial pathogen itself, but by the immune response to the pathogen. Pathogen stimulated overproduction of cytokines lead to the symptoms of bacterial septic shock, food poisoning, and toxic shock syndromes. Cell wall endotoxin of some gram negative bacteria activate macrophages, resulting in release of high level of interleukin 1 and TNF alpha, which can cause septic shock. In staphylococcal food poisoning and toxic shock syndrome, Exotoxin produced by the pathogens function as superantigens, which can activate all T cells that express T cell receptors with a particular B vita domain. The resulting overproduction of cytokines by activated T cells causes many of the symptoms of this disease. The ability of some bacteria to survive intracellularly within infected cells can result in chronic antigenic activation of CD4 positive T cells leading to tissue destruction by a cell mediated response with the characteristics of delayed type hypersensitivity reaction. Cytokines secreted by this activated CD4 positive T cells can lead to extensive accumulation and activation of macrophages resulting in formation of a granuloma. The localized concentration of lysosomal enzyme in these granulomas can cause extensive tissue necrosis. Much of the tissue damage seen with mycobacterium tuberculosis is due to the cell mediated immune response. In conclusion, immune response to bacteria differs with respect to the presence of bacteria extracellularly or intracellularly. The extracellular bacteria are usually countered by the humoral immune response comprising of the antibodies and complement proteins. Secretory antibodies play a significant role in neutralization of bacteria and its toxin and in receptor-mediated phagocytosis. Activated complement proteins can eliminate extracellular bacteria by cell lysis, receptor-mediated phagocytosis, and by inducing localized inflammatory response. Intracellular bacteria are usually cleared by activating NK cells and by cell-mediated immune response involving T helper 1 cells and macrophages. Bacteria have four major steps in evading a host cell and in each step, the host defense mechanism tries to prevent the invasion. However, bacteria have evolved many mechanisms to counter the host immune mechanisms. Sometimes, a disease can be caused not by a bacterial infection, but by heightened non-specific immune response against a bacterial toxin. When a bacteria could escape the immune response and survive intracellularly, it can cause a chronic inflammatory response involving T helper 1 cells and macrophages, which can have extensive tissue damage by necrosis. <laughs>